Hi everyone, it's Anna Haferman, and today I'm going to show you a dishcloth on the LK150. A lot of you have been asking for dishcloth patterns, and I know a lot of us like to make these and give them as gifts. You can also use this as a face cloth. Uh, it's just a simple tuck stitch pattern, two color tuck. It's pretty easy to do, and uh, it looks nice, so it makes a really nice gift. So before I start, I want to thank everyone who's supported my channel by joining as a member, by giving to the YouTube Super Thanks, or the Buy Me A Coffee link, and all of you who comment and like and share my videos. I appreciate it, and uh, it really does help me to make more videos. So to do this, I'm using this brand new yarn that Premier sent me to review. And um, this is called Minikins. It's a 50-50 cotton acrylic blend. And uh, it comes in these little 50 gram balls, which is perfect for this project uh, because you need two colors. So you just need two balls of whatever color and you can probably get four of these dish towels out of two balls of yarn. So um, it's nice and soft and springy. Uh, the cotton gives it, makes it, uh, you know, uh, absorbing. And the acrylic, I think, just makes it dry a little faster. So I blocked this one. It uh, came out really nice. You don't have to block these, but I did just for fun to see how it would come out. So. Uh, this yarn also comes in a lot of colors, uh, and I want to thank Premier for sending these to me. This is a sport weight yarn, so it works great on the LK150, and it is coming. It they are, I will put a link in the description for where you can get these. There, they also have a lot of yarns on sale. I got some really nice lace weight linen yarn a bag deal that was amazingly priced so go check that out I'll put a link for that too so and the other really cool thing is that these can feed from the uh, like from the center of the ball or cake or whatever you want to call it so that really is nice that you don't have to wind these so I did mine on this, the blue one I did with this white and blue, and you see I have quite a bit left over. So I'm gonna do this one in pink and white. Uh, you can do it in any colors you like. I think it works best if they have some contrast. Here's a couple I've done uh, over the years. This is a green and white one. This is different yarn. This one I did with uh, actually another premier called yarn called uh, Cotton Fair, which is fairly similar to this, but uh, just slightly different. This one I did in pink and red, and I made it a little bigger because I hadn't checked my gauge, but uh, this stitch, it's also a little looser. So this stitch would make a really nice baby blanket or spa towel or whatever, you know, as long as once you know how to do this stitch, which is pretty easy. You can make just about anything with it. So to start, I'm going to use some waste yarn um, just to get things going to establish stitches because I'm going to e-wrap and then go directly into the tuck. So it's very difficult to knit off from that. Uh, so the waste yarn really is gonna help me to uh, establish my stitches. So I'm just using the green for that and um, I'm going to go from 2020 to 21. I need an even number, uh, odd number of stitches for this to make it work out. So however wide or whatever you want it, just make sure you have an even number if you want the edges to look nice. So, and then I'm just gonna cast on with uh, the cast on comb. And so I'm gonna be at tension four for this and just do a easy cast on. 
with the comb. And I like to hang this comb this way because I feel like it uh, gives, it's a little easier. So you just hang it backwards like that and put a weight on it. And that way it's easier to get that stitch out of where it is. And you can, um, uh, it seems to stay on better if you put it backwards. So in the book, they tell you to do it the other way, but I have found that this works better for me. So just casting on, doing my waist yarn. So then I'm going to cut the waste yarn. I'm just cutting that. And um, I'm going to get rid of it now because I'm going to thread the other color. So. I've got the pink I pulled out from the center of the little skein and uh, these feed pretty easily from the little skein. Uh, you probably want to pull a little bit out at first so it so it flows smoothly but then just put your um, the color you want on the edge put it on the right and the other color, which I guess we'll call the contrast color, we'll put on the left. So just park that and just make sure that it's flowing pretty freely to start, which mine, I hope, is. The white I used on the first, the first one, so it is um, flowing pretty freely now. So, but once you get it started, it's pretty easy. Once I have the waist yarn, established I'm going to e-wrap so I've got the yarn coming from here from the carriage actually and then I just go like that and e-wrap all the way across so now that I've e-wrapped I want to start in with the pattern um, so to do that I need to be in hold on both sides of the carriage so that's at the one here and these should these all the levers should be facing backwards and depending what machine you're using there's different ways you put things on hold but generally for the plastic machines all the levers will go backwards and the reason I use the um, waste yarn is well a couple reasons first of all I want to weight it down uh, but second of all, I'm going to start in with the tuck stitch right away. So I want to have, um, it's, it's next to impossible to start tuck stitch on the second and the first row. And maybe you can do it. I can't. So um, to do that, I'm going to be tucking every other needle. And since my needles are out here, I'm going to push them all back to... Uh, upper working position that's right here uh, not all the way back to working position or everything will fall off the needle this is upper working positions right about here there's a little oval so I'm going to push everything back to upper working position and then selecting them I'm going to pull starting with the second one here I'm going to pull those to hold and these Okay, and it's important to start with the second needle to get the pattern to work out right. If you want uh, white around all the edges, that's what you're going to have to do. So that's what I'm going to do, and I've got my carriage and hold. I'm going to go to zero. These are my first two rows. So these are going to hold. The ones back here are going to knit. So I'm going to do two rows. Two. OK, 
Okay, and um, make sure everything looks good. And then I'm going to take this white yarn and park it over on the right hand side. And I just do that by going over here. It's coming. I usually just park it right here. Um, so then I have the pink or whatever your contrast color is. So I'm going to thread that. So then here's the pattern. What we do uh, is the stitches that are in hold, which is all of these up here, I'm going to push back to upper working position. And then I'm going to pull the other needles that are back there to hold. So, and then I will knit, that one went back a little too far. I'm going to knit two rows. And then when I have the contrast color, when I get to this side, I'm going to take this yarn that's going over that needle and I'm just going to push it under it. So we're just basically wrapping that needle and then I'm going to come back. And my yarn, I should have pulled out a little more. It's not running too freely yet. It will, but so if that happens, just pull those stitches back. It's no big deal. So just make sure you've got your yarn flowing nicely. So then when I'm on the right with the pink, I just need to take it and park it. And since I can't really reach, I'm gonna park it right under that clip. Um, that'll, that'll work. Uh, normally I would do it, you know, park it on the left hand, the uh, left hand side of the bed, but since I, since I'm knitting side saddle, I'm going to do it that way. So now then the pattern goes like this. And so that one pretty much automatically wrapped itself. So now, now what I do is push the needles and hold back to upper work. And then the needles that are in work out to hold. And then I knit two rows. Now, when I get over here with the white, uh, because it knits the last stitch, I don't need to wrap anything because there's nothing to wrap. And then I knit back. And then I change yarn. So now I'm going to put the, uh, take the white out and do the pink. And at first it sounds a little laborious, but it really goes pretty fast once you get going. So I changed color. I'm going to push back the front ones, the needles in hold, and then I'm going to push out the ones in um, uh, upper in work, working position. That's where they were. So then I'm going to put a little bit of weight on the end. And then I'm just going to knit two rows. So I'm going to put one. And with the pink, I'm always going to wrap. And then I'm going to come back and change color. And really, this goes pretty fast once you get going. Um, so I'll change color then. All I do for the entire pattern is push the needles in hold back to upper work. Push the needles that are in work out to hold. So that's it. And then I knit two rows. I don't have to wrap with the white and come back. Then I change color. push the ones in hold go back only to upper working position and the ones back here in working position go out to holding position. So this it looks like that on the back and then the front will be this stripe pattern and that's you know we did some two color tuck before and it does amazing things. 
it's one of, it's really my favorite kind of pattern because it seems kind of like magic so remember to always wrap that pink you don't have to but it makes a nicer edge i think so if you were do doing something with this pattern where you were seaming it you probably wouldn't have to wrap so it's up to you of course so I just continue with that. And you know, this pattern can be used for anything like a baby blanket, a scarf, anything square uh, or rectangular, it will work. Um, so push those back, push these out and knit two rows. Don't have to wrap the white. So it that's all you do. And um, you just keep going for a hundred and I think it was 120 rows. And that's it. The things I can tell you are occasionally this stitch will seem a little, it'll get a little tighter on this side, just kind of by the nature of the machine and how knitting goes so sometimes i'll pull it out a little you don't have to do that um pull it back a little the other thing is suppose you're talking a lot and recording a video or something like that and you can't remember where you are like which uh i'm my carriage i haven't put any yarn in my carriage yet so i'm like where am i so it's pretty easy to tell what you need to do so if you see you look at your stitches and I can see that there are two whites uh, white yarns tucked on the stitches I don't know if you can see that so there's like two uh, strands of white coming over and one pink uh, so you know those are the ones that tucked the last time so therefore you're going to use the other color so it's just a that's the way you tell. Um, and also you can see these single stitches are white, so that means you do pink. But I think the easiest way to tell is the two strands of whatever color, you know you just did those, so it's gonna be the other, other ones. And if you can't remember, if you push back the right ones, and if you've changed it, first of all these are going to be in work if you didn't change it so that's one clue that you would need to push the needles back the other is you look at those tuck stitches they're out to hold so obviously you just did those so we'll push those back because these are going to tuck this time okay so that's really it so we're going to do 120 rows we're always going to wrap this stitch needle um, and then we're going to change color and uh, this is a fun little project it doesn't take that long once you get going it's um, it doesn't take a lot of yarn so I weighed this after I was done it weighed 24 grams and two of these these are 50 grams, so two of them are 100 grams divided by 24. You can get probably four, you should easily be able to get four dishcloths out of them. And um, they make nice gifts. You could give a couple colors and uh, wrap them up, put a nice little bar of soap or a little thing of dish detergent, uh, whatever you want to do. So I'm getting towards the end here and I'm set to go across with the pink. One thing is if you, um, when you move the yarn around, or when you move it around a lot, it gets kind of slack in the uh, feeder. So all you really need to do for that is you can either pull it back from the ball or you can just kind of hold on to it. I don't know if you can see me here, let's see. You just kind of hold on to it sort of hold on to it and move the carriage across and you'll feel it connect and then you're good, you can let go. So, then, so I'm gonna do two more rows of pink. And then that's gonna be it for the pink. 
so I'm going to cut that pink yarn. And I'm just going to weight it down with a clip. So then my last two rows in pattern. So I'm at 120. I'm still going to do two more rows in white. So I'm going to push those back one more time. Push these out. And then I'm going to knit two rows. Now, so I'm going to thread a needle and um, back stitch bind off. And you'll want a fairly long uh, piece of yarn for this. So what I'm going to do is go um, into the first stitch and in the front of it and then in the back of the second one. Now the second one, you make sure you go through that pink one because um, that's the actual stitch. Then go back to the first one, skip the one with the pink and go through the back of that third one. Then when you go through here, go through all three, the pink and under that yarn there, and then go through the back of that pink. And then go forward the white. And each time I'm trying to get under that yarn, uh, you can either go over or under, but just make sure you do it the same way. And in the back of that one. So it, um, if you like my videos, please like and subscribe. Uh, any comments or likes or shares or anything really does help me out. So. I appreciate your support, and um, I'm really liking this Premier yarn. This uh, I'm really liking these mini kins. Um, I really like that they come. You don't have to rewind them into balls into cakes. That is a nice little feature because so many yarns for machine knitters. There aren't many yarns for machine knitters, so, uh, but I mean, we can use a lot of yarns. We just have to wind them into cakes usually. And so now, uh, it used to be a lot of yarns on cones, but now that doesn't seem to be as common, but uh, often you can find yarn on cakes, which is good too. But these are just as good since they pull from the middle and didn't have any trouble feeding. Um, after the first uh, pulling out some and then it'll feed pretty pretty easily once you get it going. So when you get to the last needle, go through that last one, then you still go back one Go through it again, and then just go through it in the back one more time, and that should close it up. Okay, so now Let's see what we got here. Taking off my clips. So to get this off, all I would have to do is go forward with everything and back with everything. We still have the waste yarn, so go to the side without the tails. So there's two sides. This one has the tails and this one does not. So I will clip that last stitch there, just that green one. And you know, make sure you're not clipping any pink or white. Clip. And then you can take 
this tail over here, this top one, and just pull it out. And it should come out pretty easily. And then, there we go. Anyway, here it is. I've woven in all my tails and the back looks like this. It has a lot of nice texture and the front gets this really nice striped pattern. And here's Claudine who is um, coming to check it out. The minikins are great. Uh, they, it's nice and soft. It goes through the machine really well and it feeds from the from the little cone cake, whatever you want to call it. So it works great uh, that you don't have to wind anything up. The gauge I got was um, 20 stitches by 60 rows uh, equals about four inches. So 40 stitches, actually it was 21 stitches, 41 stitches by 120 rows about is about eight by eight. And uh, let me know, I've got links in the, in the description for the yarn. Comes in a lot of colors. So go check that out. And um, so check it out. And uh, Claudine says, hey. <laughs>